already. It's been like two minutes. All right, so let's sing it out on this last verse on the chorus. We're going to go acapella. If you guys do something so spectacular, let's sing to the Lord. Let's sing with our heart. That's where you're going to have your face, because that thing is just, that's what it is. You guys, some of you are old enough. You remember Julius Irving? Oh, yeah. Played uh, for the Sixers. Man, that was it right there. Can you play like Julius? No? Okay, that's all right. <laughs> but we'll still accept you in. We're glad. You're the, I, 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 have you watched the video I, I, I take around the country and raise money, and you're in it with that big old afro? Have you ever seen the video? Man, I'm going to have to show you the video. You're, you're world famous. People say, that guy with the afro in the church. I'm like, yep, he sure is. <laughs> One of my best friends, amen. Good to see everybody. Honestly, I'm glad to be here. We're going to have a good night. Good to have the newlyweds back in the house, amen. <laughs> Miss Ruth and Harrison. You guys can congratulate them. And uh, they still look happy, praise the Lord. <laughs> Isn't that something? And that's good. I'm glad for them. Uh, let's uh, let's keep them in prayer as they transition, especially Miss Ruth transition to the city. But Lord's good, and He'll take care of all that, all our needs. We're blessed, and uh, good to have Brother Ito fix uh, Rakim's relatives' mistakes <laughs> back there. The wall, Remember, did, did you? Oh, you didn't see it, Miss Lisa. Rakim's nephew dove into the wall, put a hole in it. <laughs> Ito said, "I got this," and, he, and Rakim was running to Home Depot right in the middle of a Sunday. <laughs> But they fixed it, man. It looks, looks. Actually, I told uh, I, I got to get Rod Kim because I want him to, one of your nephews to run into that wall right outside to the right. <laughs> run into that one because that wall looks better than it did before it got the mistake. That man looks like the whole wall got skimmed, amen. And so, hook me up on that Rod Kim and run that boy into that. If you want to just die, throw a kid into it, that'd be fine. We we'll call it an accident. Just, just put somebody your hand over that camera out there when you do it. And camera in the hole. We want anybody to see that. Amen. But well, praise the Lord. Good to see everybody tonight. Listen, we're going to have church. I'm thankful for it. And I love that song. It's my wife's favorite hymn. Uh, and I like 42 in the hymnal. And it's a blessing. Amen. What a Savior. What a Savior we got. And what, a, what a blessing he is. And hopefully you spent some time with him today. If not, we're going to get to spend some time with him tonight. And so you can do that right now as we pray. You don't have to feel guilty. You can say, Lord, you know, I should have spent some more time with him today. But can I talk to you now? And guess what he is? He's a, he's a very loving God. And he loves his children. Thank God for that. He knew, God, you, listen, you have not surprised God no matter what you're doing, going through, whatever. God's not looking at you going, I cannot believe he's doing that. No, God bought you, loves you, wants you, and, and, and want, just wants you to draw closer to him. He, he expects us to mess up, but he desires that we walk with him and get right with him. So let's do that tonight. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to bless and meet with us tonight. Looking forward to the service. Father, we love you. And thank you for bringing us all in, Lord, and keeping us safe as we're here. Very thankful for Miss Maria to make it in and back, back down to Philly. And I uh, thank for uh, Brother Harris and Miss Ruth getting in safely. And, and all our folks here, what a blessing, Lord, to have every person here. And, and God, I'm thankful that we find this important. And we need it, Lord, in the middle of the week, a week of work, a week of the world, a week of possibly tribulation and different things going on in our, each one of our lives, health or families or jobs or money or whatever it is. Lord, we need a touch from the master. And so tonight, God, we ask you to do that. And if you could speak to us through the preaching and teaching of the word, through the song service, Lord, if you'd hear our prayers tonight, God, we love you. We want you. We pray that you'd minister to us as we try to minister to you. 
And Lord, help us to be mindful of that. Everything we think, every word we speak, every song we sing, it should be directed to you. And we love you. And so we're thankful for everything. Lord, bless the service tonight. Be with each facet of it. Be with the kids club, Lord, the nursery, the, the service in here, everything that's going on. God, thank you for being good to us and bringing us in tonight. Bless the service now, please, with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing.
He's all you need. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't get down and pray, God, make me believe that's all, you're all I need. I, I don't want to learn the hard way. I want to focus in on them immediately and say, Lord, I want you to be all I need. I need everything from, from him. And, and, and that's hard in the fast what life we live in to sit down and think about God sometimes. But let's make sure we do that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Ms. KK. Uh, let's go ahead and do the announcements if we can. And, uh, uh, we got any announcements for the chair? And so we'll do those. And so remember, Sunday is Old Fashioned Sunday. Hope you got your duds. And if you don't, get to the store and try to figure something out. Uh, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ideas. You can even put in there Old Fashioned Sunday on the, on the Internet, and you'll give you ideas, stuff like that. Get your chili ready. Who's going to win the chili cook-off? Raise your hand if you're going to win it. Miss Kara and Eustace. And, uh, yeah, Christian's going to win it, too. Praise God. You guys are bringing two chilies. That's a blessing, Brother Eustace. <laughs> yeah, Joshua's, the whole family, they're going to make it. All right, well, that's good. Rakim, he didn't ra Rakim's trying to be humble. Because in, in his mind, he's like, I got this. I'm going to do my thing. So, anyways, no, but it'd be good. And uh, it's going to be an exciting day. We'll have a good time. Have some good old-fashioned preaching, amen, and some singing. and be a real good time. If you don't if you don't dress up, we're not going to beat you over the head. But let's try to have fun with it if we can, okay? That would be a lot of a good thing. Remember the ladies' Bible study, November 13th. Don't forget about that. That's coming quick. Those books, I believe, came in to my house today. And if you did not get a book and forgot to talk to Ms. Kara, talk to her now. I think we ordered a couple of extras. Uh, so everybody be able to get one. So if you need to get one of those, talk to her and see her about the price, all that stuff be good. And then uh, we're going to have a men's activity Monday night, the 20th, over at Brother Andrew and Miss Amanda's house. And that's Eagles versus Chiefs. Rematch from the Super Bowl, praise God. And so Monday night football, used to football. It's like that brown thing with the stripes. Oh. <laughs> Brother David, what's going through your mind right now when he said that? Just tell us. Yeah, he's a judge fan. Yeah. Brother Eustace, come on, man. Unity in the church. Everybody else cares about the Eagles. Yeah, don't, be a, don't be a rebel. And you're teaching your kids to be rebels. Kids, Eagle fans, you grew up in Philly. Oh, yeah, you grew up in Philly. You better get on, get on it. Hey, Amen. Yeah, we're going to go over there. Eustace not invited anymore, but that would be okay. But you still got to pay your ten dollars, Eustace. So we're gonna we're just gonna do, get about ten dollars ten dollars ahead to get a bunch of pizza and wings. That'd be fun. We're gonna I'm gonna have you talk to Brother Andrew. Want to know who's coming so we know what to order and different things like. All oh, you men get in on that. That'd be a good thing, and we'll enjoy that and have a good time with it. Uh, and uh and, and praise the Lord for it. All right, we got the Puente family is our missionaries of the week. Brother Albert Puente is over in Spain. And uh, he's a blessing, and uh, we've been a while since we talked to him. But brother Albert, how you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? Yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great. Tell us how everything's going over there in Spain, my friend. Good, great. Um, I think right now our biggest uh, encouragements have been just three or four uh, unbelievers that started coming to our church over the past four or five months. And we've seen some um, just really good uh, fruits from that. Um, we're discipling them, uh, uh, working with them uh, to for baptism, and going real well, really encouraging. Two of them come from like a Roman Catholic background. Another one is a former um, atheist. I mean, super... Uh, yeah, against anything religious and, you know, seeing these people come to faith in Christ has been super encouraging over the past few months. Um, and then the other thing that's on our hearts right now 
um, has been our building situation. So we currently rent a building from a, um, a free brother in church. And uh, over the past few weeks, we've been just jam packed on Sunday, on the Sunday worship service. And we've been praying really hard as a church for God to provide a, a building for us to meet in. But so far we haven't been able to find a space. Um, so just pray if you guys could pray for the next, uh, yeah, weeks, hopefully not months that God would provide a new building facility that we could, uh, yeah, that we could use. Yeah. For, we'll for definitely pray. Um, yeah, that'd be, yeah, because it's getting to a point where people are coming in and I'm kind of concerned that they may feel like there's no room for them. So, uh, yeah, we really need a, uh, a new building. And then uh, in regards to just training new pastors, things are going great. Uh, it looks like there's uh, uh, three families from our church we're going to send out to plant a church in the next year or two. Amen. So that's super encouraging. Uh, they're, they're young guys in their 20s and 30s, really on fire for the Lord, really growing in their preaching and you know shepherding. And so Lord willing, next year or two, we, we, we'll send them out uh, out of our church to plant the church somewhere in the area. Amen, Brother Alberto. That's great. Yeah. I was calling you Albert. My my youth pastor told me your name was Albert, but I knew it was Alberto. It doesn't matter. So I, I just sorry about that. I apologize. But um Oh, don't I, worry. I, 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 I just I, roll with it. <laughs> you go with it. How's your wife and the kids doing? Great. Yeah, kids are great. Uh wife is great. How um, long have you guys been yeah. there now? Here in Sevilla, it'll be in twelve years in November. Oh, uh, at the end of this month. Wow. Yeah, we're in November. End of this month, 12 years. That That's unbelievable. It doesn't feel like it's been 12 years since you and your wife visited and before you had left. I mean, you know, I, I remember. Cause did your wife go to Heartland? I, I I forgot where she went to college yet. Where'd you guys meet at? Uh, we met in middle school. In middle school. Isn't Is she from crazy? Spain? Yeah. No. So I moved to the States when I was 11. Okay. My dad planted a Spanish-speaking church in North Alabama. Okay. So when I went to Christian school and she was, uh, yeah, she was in the same Christian school. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got that all mixed up. I knew y'all, but you guys went to Bible college together. Uh, no, we were separate. So I went to Crown College up in Powell, Tennessee. Okay. My wife stayed home, uh, went to the uh, Bible Institute that our local church had. Right. So, yeah. Well, hey, man, it feels like I don't even know you. Sorry. It's all good. Uh, hey, man. Well, good, Brother Alberto. Tell us, is there anything we can pray about besides the building, some things going on, anything we can uh, you know, keep close to us this week as we pray for you? No, I think, yeah, I think that's the, the, the things that are in our heart right now is this building situation and... New church. Yeah, and, and being able to get these guys finish their training. We've got like a two-year training program for guys that want to plant churches they're full-time so they're they're really 40 hours a week they're just working hard on their uh pastoral training and uh so yeah those are the biggest things right now well, that's a blessing we was uh my family and i were talking about you yesterday uh we were supposed to go to israel and they canceled us and they gave oh, wow. us they, they're probably giving us vouchers on el al uh, airlines, the uh, the Jewish airline, and I, oh, and I looked at some wife. They go to Spain, I nice. said we could uh, we could fly to Spain and and see Brother Alberto and his family in the church, and and make it kind of a missions type deal. As we we're going to fly somewhere eventually, we're probably not flying to Israel anytime soon. So yeah, uh, but That'd anyway, be a bad idea. we would love to come visit you sometime and see the work and and see everything awesome. that's going on. It'd be great. That's awesome. That's great. Yes, sir. Well, listen, my thank you for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, oh, no worries. If you need anything, uh, you know, feel free to give us a text or an email on any needs you might have and and different things like that. And we're definitely gonna pray for you tonight and for your wife and thank kids. Thank you. Appreciate and, that. And your brother's helping you too, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, he's been he's been here with me. He's been a huge help and uh, great compliment. We really compliment each other. So it's been great. Yeah, praise the Lord. Well, good, Brother Alberto. Well, uh, our church, you know, we're all here tonight. And we're going, we're getting ready to have a word of prayer here. So we'll let you Thank go. You. 
And I thank you for whatever time it is. What is it about one o'clock in the morning or something? Or twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Well, in now, am I right? In Spain, everybody goes to bed late, wakes up late. Nah, is that that true or no? Urban urban legend. It's yeah, it's not true. <laughs> I've, I've told my wife a kiss and we'll go over there we'll sleep till 11 we'll go to bed like 1 o'clock in the morning it'd be great to be in Spain for a little bit yeah, so that's not true great. huh no uh, most people go to bed All 9, right. 10 o'clock yeah. All right. well that was another thing my youth pastor told me so you pray for him he's got a lot of bad information tonight so yeah, uh, yeah. he's making me look bad I apologize for that and uh, hey listen brother Alberto we're going to pray for you and we sure love you, you guys if you need anything you please too. let us know thanks for taking the time buddy Yes, sir. No problem. All right. All right. Have a good guys. night. Thank All right. you. All right. Let's go ahead and pray for the Puente family. And uh, and I'm, I thank God. I, I can't believe it's been 12 years since they were here. Uh, it does, who remembers them coming here? That that his wife's from Alabama. Of course, I I forgot. I, I missed all that up, but I remember it now. And uh, a little blonde haired girl they they had taken her over to to Spain's brother. They've been busy. Those guys are they're heat seeking missiles over there. I mean, they're they're all about new testament christianity and we can learn a lot from i can learn a lot from someone like that just to see that they wake up and they're like man we got to reach people we got these churches start we got to train these men he's training men 40 hours a week on how to start churches and that that's an awesome um uh thing to think about and for us to possibly consider here in the future making it a hub and different things that's been a, a vision of mine make it a hub and send people out and get the job done and so let's pray for them right now and uh we'll ask the lord to just continue to work with them and keep them safe father we love you and thank you lord for letting us talk to brother puente and uh thank you that we get to support them on a monthly basis with not only finances lord but hopefully with prayer and Lord, I need to make a, our missionaries a matter of prayer more often. I need to get another card and be able to keep it in the forefront of my mind and my Bible where I stare at it on a daily basis. And Lord, I pray that you would take care of him, his wife, and his kids, Lord, in these churches. I pray for a building, Lord. I pray that you'd open up the floodgate there and, and show him where he needs to be and how he needs to do it. God, it's a good problem to have, but it is something to be a, a little bit worked up about thinking people would leave because they don't have a place to sit and it'd be hard to catch them all. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless their efforts. you give them a great building, give them a great area, help these men, these families that are looking to go out and start churches to continue to work. Thank you, Lord, for faith, promise, missions. Thank you for our dear people that sacrifice on a weekly basis and could use that money somewhere else here, I'm sure, but decide to trust you, Lord. And it's a wonderful plan. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm so thankful for what you're doing, Lord, through us here at this church. I pray that you continue to bless that and help us to have our eyes set upon the world like you do and do what we can do here in Philly and send it out over there to where it would be able to help these missionaries to get the job done there. Lord, please help us all to be faithful to you and help the Puente family protect him, protect his wife and kids. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand. Brother Jesse, you come and we'll... We'll lead a song here, and we'll shake some hands. We'll dismiss. Let's go ahead and dismiss the little lights right now. That'd be good. All right, page 180, standing on the promises. We'll sing a verse or two, and then we will dismiss for some fellowship. Let's sing it out on the first verse of standing on the promises. Standing on is of Christ my King through eternal ages let his praises ring glory in the highest I will shout and sing standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises
standing on the promises. Let's sing those last two verses. Here we go. Standing on the promises. Miss Jessica texted me tonight, and this is not the right thing to say. She said she's not going to be able to get the service probably. She's been in the hospital, but she's okay. She's been there all day, but she's doing fine. And and just one of those, I guess, you know, she I guess she's fine. And I said, well, just let me know if you need anything. So pray for her if you could. Her not being able to be here, that would be a blessing. And I just didn't want to forget that. And so let's pray for the offering and uh, ask the Lord. Anybody got anything we can pray about as far as our church family and different things? Yes, Miss Lisa. Oh my goodness. Gaston? <clears throat> Amen. 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 Good. For the Gaston family, keep them in the prayer. That would be a blessing. Anybody else got something? Yes, sir. Who? J.D. Leak. Okay. Yeah. Her daughter's name what? Okay. They both having problems? Okay. Got to pray for that. Anybody else? Marie. Okay. Okay. Just in general, pray for him. Okay. All right. Brother Hector, would you raise your hand? Amen. Alexis. Okay. All right. What was your nephew's name? Matthew. Matthew. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Miss Le Miss uh, Monique. Okay. Pray Miss Monique doesn't get found guilty. <laughs> About that. It's no one spoken. We don't want her to get found guilty. Pray, pray about Miss Monique and, and everything going on there, and that would be good. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely pray about that. Anybody else? All right, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for <clears throat> loving us, Lord. I do pray for these requests, Lord, all of them, that you would uh, help the Gaston family at the loss of that, that dear lady. I'm glad she was safe, God. I'm glad that, that testimony was given. Uh, I pray for uh, 
Matt, Lord, in prison, and I pray for Miss Miss Linda's situation there with Helen and the that blocks just kind of a wild thing, and then Alexis, Lord, pray for her with that Bible and to be saved and to and understand that. Pray for Miss Monique and her family, Lord, that you would continue to work there and uh, for your will to be done, God, in those areas. And then pray for uh, the Leak family and those two dear girls, Lord, that you would help them and uh, and then and their health. And Lord, I know if my daughters were hurt, I'd want somebody praying for them. So I do pray that you touch them and help them. And, and by the grace of God, may they be exactly what you'd want them to be. And then remember that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to purpose. And so, Father, help us with that, Lord, tonight. God, we sure need you, Lord. These prayers mean a lot to every person giving them. And, Lord, I hope they mean a lot to each one of us because I know they mean a lot to you, Lord. So please answer them. Bless the offer now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thanks for standing. <laughs> take our Bibles and turn to the book of Hosea, the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. You don't know where Hosea is. I've been, uh, I've made fun of myself the other day, not knowing where all the minor prophets keep forgetting the order of them. So it would be Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. And so I believe that would be, no, yeah, Daniel, Hosea. So uh, turn there, that'd be good. Just find one of them books and start turning to the right. You'll get right to it. And uh, I thought, I'm, if I'm going to read them, I'm going to memorize them again every day and just put them in my brain. I hate when I get into the minor prophets sometimes and I forget where some of those things are and the preacher's sitting there and I'm like, where in the world is that book at? And then I'm thinking everybody's watching me so I can't go to the front and go, because my pride, I'm like, I'm not going to the front looking where that book is. I'm a Bible college student. I gave myself an honorary doctorate. No, I'm kidding. All right, Hosea. Now I'll turn there after all that. And I love the book of Hosea. It's a good song I'd encourage you to listen to about the story of Hosea. And um, I was talking to Dale, trying to put some pressure on him and KK about singing this song, but just wasn't able to, and I, I didn't realize I was going to preach out of Hosea until a couple of days ago when I started, I was in my Bible reading through Hosea, and I read through it, and I thought, you know, and it's a great story, and I just began to study last couple of days, been studying and looking at some stuff, and there's a lot to be said about Hosea, it could take, it could take weeks and weeks and weeks to preach through this book, so many things that can be preached, but I'm just going to give you a simple thought, but I'm going to at least tell you what's happening so you can understand it. Let's look at verse number one of chapter number one of the book of Hosea. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of the whoredoms of the children of whoredoms, and the children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. 
and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name lo Ruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by their Lord, by the by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loami. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall be unto them, there, there it shall be unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now we're going to look at chapter number two in just a minute, but I want you to turn to chapter number three. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley and said unto her, thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king shall be and shall fear the Lord and His goodness in the latter days. Let's go ahead and pray, and uh, and and we'll preach to you just for a little bit, uh, and 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 I'm going to title it this: Thank God, God loves ugly, and and we we can say you know God don't lo like ugly. That's right. He loves it. And it's a blessing. And so uh, I hope this will be a blessing to you. I know some of it, you know, I've been rereading and rereading. So it makes a lot more sense. But if you're not careful, you can get lost in this passage. But I'm going to explain it to you. And I believe the Lord's going to do something tonight and help us. OK, so let's pray. We'll have one more song and I'll preach to you just for a little bit tonight and just give you a simple thought at the end. But I do want you to understand what's going on. It does apply today. And it will help you to understand a little more of what's going on today in Israel. And uh, there's so many things we could say about this passage, but we'll, we'll just do what the Lord led, led me to do, and we'll see how that works, okay? Father, we love you, and thank you for the inerrant, preserved, inspired word of God that we have in this King James Bible. Or there is no other Bible in the English language. We have the, the words of God that have been given to us. Lord, as we grow in Christ, we may understand more every time we read this Bible, and I know that that is true. And Lord, as some of us are older Christians, some of us are newer, some of us may understand what has just happened, some may not. Lord, I pray that the power of God would be upon me, upon my lips, and upon my mind. Lord, that you would give me exactly what you've already given me and help me to say exactly what you'd want to be said. And Lord, you would touch us as we get ready to, to leave here tonight and give us a new heart, a new thought, a new vision for, for how good you are and how, how unworthy we are. And then, Lord, you give us a thought and a vision for how unworthy the world is outside, but how much you love them and how you still want us to go to them. Lord, please help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing so long. Shepherd 
Lisa, I like that song a lot. I'm thankful for the Lord's mercy. 
Uh, you know, none of us went looking for God. You said, well, I did. I came to church one day looking for him. Well, what'd you come for? Because God came looking for you first. That's the way he does it. And I thank the Lord for that. And he didn't love us because we're something. He loves us because he's something. Because he is love. God is love. And thank God for that. Because uh, I don't know where I'd be if I got what I deserved. Uh, I know I should be, have my back broke, be in hell somewhere. I just, I just know that would be the truth. And, uh, you know, you don't have to be a drug addict to deserve hell. You know, all of us are without God. Just think, some of us got saved early. Just think the things you've done as a saved person. Uh, you know, but, but then some of us can look back at what we did before we were saved, and we can't believe we did it. We honestly cannot believe that was our lives. And so thank God for the Lord being lifted up on that cross for us. And so I want to talk to you tonight about, about, about the Jewish, uh, kind of give you the, 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 the understanding of this book here. And, and just I'm not going to preach the whole book. It's a great book. And these chapters are wonderful. And, uh, and, and, and I really, I, I've always loved Hosea just because there's a song that was written. And, uh, and, and I forgot who sings that song. Maybe I'll send it out in a group text about go plead with your mother and and we, we understand the story of Jose here in just a minute I'll tell you about this story uh, but Israel at this point in time when he's writing to, when he's talking to Hosea the God of heaven heaven is talking to this prophet. And, and it's in the time when Uzziah was the king and Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah. There was a whole slew of different kings in, in Hosea's time. And God has come to him because, because Israel is wicked. Now let me say, when I say Israel is wicked, the more I read about them lately in my Bible and I begin to look at what God says, just what God says alone about them in the book of Hosea. Uh, they were sodomites. They were they were sleeping around. They were they were into drugs and alcohol and and other people's gods. They were worshiping graven images. They were bowing down to other gods. They were taking their children and putting them in the fire and killing them to other gods. How did this happen? How did that happen by God that brings them out of Egypt and shows Himself to Moses and leads them through the through the Red Sea and leads them uh, through the wilderness. And I know that there was a lot of things that went on during that time and, and brings them into the promised land and gives them all this, this comfort and, and walls fall down and enemies don't can't fight them and, and he feeds them with, with manna and then he gives them a cattle on a thousand hills and, and, and honey and he takes such good care of them and shows them time and time again that he was God. How does that happen? Now, honestly, when I first got saved 20 years ago, I still couldn't really understand how a person could go from, especially when I first got saved. Because when you first get saved and get dedicated to God, you're like, man, I ain't ever leaving. I would never do what they did. And how did, they, how did that progress like it did? Well, I've been saved 20 years. And I can tell you, I'm not, I'm not, this is not America. The Bible's not talking about America. It's talking about the Jews. And the Jews are in big trouble even today. This has got a lot of what's happening today in it. And it talks about the regathering that he's going to regather. And it talks about that in Jeremiah 30. And it talks about it in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And it talks about it in Isaiah some. And, and the gathering of the Jews, that's going to happen one day. But right now, God has got his back to them. God is, is crippling them. God is, is punishing them. And, and listen to me. I'm not against the Jews. I don't like that anybody's dying over there. But I, the more I pray, the more I think about it, Brother Andrew, I'm just not sure what they're supposed to get right now. I'm not sure what's supposed to happen over there. If they're just, if all, all the, listen, the world has lost its mind over it. They're downtown 30th Street tonight. Uh, protesting, saying stop, they get a ceasefire in Israel when they've got 200 people over there and in, behind enemy lines. Right. Let me tell you what would happen if, if someone came in and kidnapped 200 Americans in America tonight. They, they, would, they would desecrate it. Yeah. They, they, would, they would totally annihilate it. And I hate that innocent civilians die, but we didn't go into, uh, to, uh, and I'm not here to talk about all that tonight, but we didn't go into to, to Germany and try to save the Germans. We bombed them. 
We didn't go to Japan and try to save the Japanese. We killed them. War is a dirty thing. And, it, and I'm, not, I'm just telling you, all these people turning against the Jews and Jewish people hiding in librarians while they're beating on the door telling them they're going to kill them in America. And these, these universities and all that stuff. Listen to me. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And now Biden has kind of did a little 180 and said, hey, maybe they need to pause. Where last week he said they need to go ahead and, 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 and desecrate the place. And I believe they ought to just make it a parking lot, 100%. Let all the people leave. If they don't leave, I'm sorry. Because you have done something very wrong to our country if it was my country. And, and so all this stuff is going on. But I'm really not sure what's going to happen because I think eventually by the in the next week we could be totally against them from our government standpoint and, and then when everybody turns on the bible talks about the armies coming from all around and closing in on them i'm not sure that they can you know i know that land the bible tells us that is their land and god's going to regather them one day in the tribulation into the tribulation he is going to regather them. And so if it totally right now, Brother Andrew, if everything just if they just got, 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 got scattered and wiped out right there and they somebody turned on Israel, I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with the Bible a bit. I'd say, well, I mean, that's exactly what God said he was going to do to them. He's going to scatter them and annihilate them. And, and so when Hosea is talking to them, they're not in captivity yet. I, I believe it, it is around 750 uh, B.C. And I believe they would go into captivity with the Assyrians about 730 or 720 B.C., 20 or 30 years later maybe. And, and so uh, Hosea, God has come to him and said, uh, listen, Hosea, my people are a wicked people. We didn't even read chapter number two. We're probably not going to read it for sake of time. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it in just a moment. But uh, God tells Hosea, Hosea, I want you to go marry a whore. Uh, and it's, it's a Bible word. I'm not trying to be nasty to you. A woman of, uh, what does it say here? Go take thee a wife of, of, of whoredoms. Not whoredom, whoredoms. Uh, a, a woman that is doing wrong and is selling herself. And, and this is what it says there. It says, and children of whoredoms. When we look at this, he has three children. The first one's his. The next two, we don't know whose those kids are. Uh, and, and it says his kid in the first one. The next two, we're not sure whose those are. And, and so I don't really have time to, to, to break everything down for you here tonight. But he's showing Hosea to show the people, the people of Israel, you got this man, he's going to marry a woman of whoredoms. They didn't do that. But Israel was so backwards at this point that some people think those ladies might have been doing stuff with the priest at that point, that they were so backwards in what they were doing that, that they had lost their minds and what God had taught them. You understand that? And when I said America in 20 years... We're taking babies at nine months old and taking forceps and pushing them through the brain of them and killing them. We, we, are, we are doing things and, and calling wrong right. And, 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 and yesterday I saw uh, LGBTQT whatever for, for Palestine. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. They would kill them. You can't even be a lesbian in Palestine. They kill you. And the world has lost its mind, and I've watched this country go from this to this in 20 years. So now, as I told you when I first started reading my Bible, I couldn't believe they did it. How in the world did they move like that? But the Bible's so unbelievable. And when we read them making all these backward steps, it wasn't overnight that it happened. Matter of fact, sometimes it was 20 years and everything had changed. How does it change a country like ours so blessed by God to now not even having God want it? Uh, but thank God he wants us. And, and so he tells him, he goes, I want you to go marry a woman of whoredoms and have children of whoredoms. And, and, and he's beginning to tell, talk and, and, and tell him, you know, he has the first kid, Jezreel, then he has that second one, he named of that and, and the names all mean something uh, uh, and, 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 and honestly I don't really want to get too into that uh, the word the, the, the wife's name was Gomer that means completion right? what, do, what do you think God was saying well I think God was filled up fed up and now he, he, he's, everything the Jews are doing has come to a completion and now he's about to act upon it God is making a picture of what he's going to 
do. And he's trying to show Israel what's about to happen and what God is going to uh, be able to do. God, when God came and got us, we were nothing. And, and Israel was nothing. And God put his hand on them. And God multiplied them. And God helped them to be something special in the eyes of the people. Not because they were special, God said, because he was special. Because that's what he did. And so then he has these children and and uh, and, 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 and things are happening. Look at verse number uh, verse number 10 after he has that, that third child. Verse number 9, then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people and I will not be your God. And verse number 10, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, that there shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. This is future. God, God is telling us what's going to happen in the end. And then verse number 11, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. And, and many people believe that that would be like where Armageddon, the, the, the last fight's going to happen. And, and so he's saying that that's all future. And then in chapter number 2, we talk about the unfaithfulness of Israel, how Israel's going to be punished. Look at verse number one. Say ye unto your brethren, Ami, and your sisters, Ruhama. Now God has renamed his children. The first when the children were born, Jezreel, uh, me, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jezreel means to, to uh, um, and what does it mean? To, to scatter, to, to sow in the land. And then uh, Lurami means not beloved and, 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 and not obtained mercy because it's the children of another man. She went off. He married a whore. She, she gave him a child, and then she went back to her old lifestyle in front of all the people of Israel. That's what God is showing him. This lady Gomer has gone off, and she's doing the wrong thing. She has two kids outside of marriage. And, and God is making that a picture of Israel. What Israel has done, they, they're, they've gone off and they've started whoring after other countries, other gods. The Bible talks about they look for their bread somewhere else. They look for the flagons of wine somewhere else. When God was going to take care of them, they went the wrong direction of the world. And that's why God is punishing them. When we look online and see all that stuff happening, I don't know what to say. I know to pray for the Lord's will for the people of Israel. I'm not against the people of Israel by no means. But when I was over there, they're a very hard person, hard people. Not many of them are smiling. Why? They're under the judgment of God. They got nothing to smile about. They are hard-hearted people that hate Christians. And But the young people, they smiled, but that's because they were breaking away from some of that stuff. I had an opportunity to talk to some young men, and, and, I, and they said they were at the university studying the, the Talmud. And, and, and that is a something that, that happened because of all the wickedness of Israel. They turned from what God wanted them to do and what God wrote for them to do, and they came up with their own thing to do and put it in another book and had a rabbi or some rabbi tell them what it meant and these young people are studying that that's what they study and I'd say well do you believe it they go well you know it, it's what I'm getting my degree in it's what I'm studying and I could tell that they didn't want to answer that question did they believe it they didn't believe it they don't know what to believe they're so mixed up I gave a ride to a kid uh, when I was driving Lyft way, way back and I picked him up at the airport and he got in my car and he had one of those yarmulkes on. Little 16 year old boy. And he was going to wherever that place is in New Jersey. What's that Jewish place in New Jersey? That town. Lakewood. He's going to Lakewood. So I got this young boy for, for an hour and my car was low on charging. So I said, hey, do you mind if I stop and charge? He goes, no, that'd be fine. And he gets in the car, and he's, he's coming from a school in Chicago, a, a Jewish school, where he learns about this stuff. And, and he pulls out a vape. He goes, do you mind if I vape in your car? I say, yeah, I do mind. I really don't want you to do that. So we start talking. I start asking him, you know, hey, so I, I didn't know much about it. I said, so what tribe are you from? 
He goes, well, nobody really knows. I, I think we're probably from the tribe of Judah is what he said. And, and I said, oh, okay. And I didn't know that, that it's gotten so mixed up. A lot of people have no idea what tribe they're in. And, 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 and the, all that, a lot of that stuff was lost. And, and so I started questioning him. And then I started trying to plant seeds because I told him I was a drug addict. And God changed my life as a Christian. And he goes, oh, so you're a Christian. I said, yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ changed my life. And he began to indulge and to talk with me. And I began to plant seeds on him. And I began to ask him, does he believe what his dad and mom are teaching? He goes, I really don't know what to believe. He said, most young people like me really do don't believe it. We're just being taught it and we have to go with it until we get our own life one day. And we just have to act like it. And I thought, man, I cannot believe that. And I said, listen, I said, here's my number. It's on a track. I said, would you call me? Because I would love to talk to you and I can help you to understand some things. And, and I'm for you. And listen, young man, because he had told me that he almost died of, of drinking. He was in his place. He was 15 years old. And he drank too much and got alcohol poison and almost died. And he's this little Jewish boy with the yarmulke on and studying to be a, uh, something in the Jewish community. And, and I said, listen. Listen, if you ever need anything, I'm your friend from here on out. And you can call me at midnight. You call me at 2 in the morning. If you need something, I'm coming to get you, and I'm going to help you. And he just could not believe it. And when I got out of the car, I was broken for him. I cried driving home. I'm like, God, help that little boy. Help him to get saved. Help him to see this. They're confused. And, and they don't know what to believe. So this point in time with the Jews, all the leaders had went off and started doing their own thing. And all the people started following the leaders. And they're so mixed up, just like America is today. You would not believe why all these Baptist churches in this city are going to vote for baby murderers. Because they said it's up to them and God to figure that out. We're voting to get jobs in this city. And the... the the, the, however you want to frame it and call it with the Republicans and the Democrats and all that stuff. They're so mixed up. Why? Because they've been taught from the top that this is right and they're not figuring it out themselves. And they're, not, they're being misled. And so Israel is so topsy-turvy right now and so in the wrong direction. Hosea knows it. Hosea is seeing it. He's talking to a people that professed to be God's people who had God's word, who saw Elijah work and Elisha work recently with the power of the miracles. They had every advantage and they were groveling in idolatry and in sin. They were relatives to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They they were a day's march from Jerusalem. They were into superstition and, and, and indulging in every form of immorality and social injustice that you can think of and worshiping graven images at this point. And God's fed up. And God is pronouncing judgment. And he, he is getting ready to clean it up. So he has her go marry that girl. God has him go marry that girl. And she leaves him. And then in chapter number two, we see everything that God says about the Israel and how, how they, he, he's getting ready to, he, he's almost like he's talking about, about Gomer, but he's really talking about Israel. And he says, she has been unfaithful to me. She has run off with other men. She's run off with other people. She's looking for her bread somewhere else. She's looking for her wine somewhere else. And, and, and God lists all these things. Verse 5. Look at verse 5, chapter number 2. For their mother had played the harlot. She had conceived them that had done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns. I will make a wall and she shall not find her path. Talking about Israel. Now, listen to me. We're almost done. And she shall follow after, I'm sorry, uh, follow after her lovers, and she shall not, she, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for it was better with me 
for it was better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which she had prepared for Baal. She's worshiping Baal. Israel is totally turned away from God and doesn't want God. False religion has got them. Look at verse number 13. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, whereupon she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with earrings and jewels, and she went after her lovers. Look at it. And forgot me, saith the Lord. That's what happened to Israel, man. They, they totally forgot God. Now, like I said, I didn't mean to make this about a, 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 a compare it to America, but this is a nation founded on biblical principles. And, and God was in the schools, and God was in the, the homes in a lot of places in America. And now, honestly, not talking about us, I am an American. But they've totally turned away from God now. And so we're no better than Israel, but we have the grace of God. We have grace from Jesus, and, and God's not going to uh, punish us like he has is punishing Israel. But as a child of God, man, we better be very careful how we live and what we think about and how we're, 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 we're living each day because God is fed up with Israel here, and, and he's, he's pronouncing judgment. Verse chapter number 3. No, no, look into verse number two. I'm sorry, chapter two, verse number 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I'll have mercy upon her that hath not obtained mercy. God's now saying, I'm going to have mercy on Israel, and she doesn't deserve it. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my Lord. And then look what the Lord does in verse chapter number 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took the other gods and, and loved flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many, many, da many days. Look at chapter number two, verse number two. Let me just, I, I think I overlooked this. Plead with your mother. He told, God told him to tell his kids, and he renames his kids. He goes, tell your kids to go plead with your mama. She's left. She's now out in the streets again. She's probably with another man having babies with that other man. It's a perfect picture of God's grace. And this is where I wanted to get to tonight, that we're so blessed. Because I, I understand some of you were, were a lot better people than I was before I got saved. And I'm okay with that. Because, because you were. There's no, no doubt about it. Not everybody was just some, a wild animal. But no matter what we were, we were away from God and we were not wanting God. And God came and got us. And, and listen to me, as a Christian, if you're a Christian who has now walked away from God again, you know what God told him? He says, go and buy her back. He not only made, her, made him marry a whore, but he says, now she's playing the whore again, and I want you to go buy her back from the man that she sold herself to. They would often sell themselves to people so they could be fed, and they would do whatever is told of them. And I want you to go buy her back, and I'm going to take care of her, and, and you're going to take care of her. And, and he makes that promise, and he says in verse number 5, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek their Lord the God, their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Now, I want to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of torn on, on that uh, David their king because it also says it in Ezekiel that David is going to be the king when and, and after the tribulation a lot of things and, and some people say well that's just you know saying that's going to be God but but I'm not so sure I, and it doesn't matter to me who's going to David's going to be there maybe or David's not I know the apostles and different things are going to be around in heaven when when all that's set up and but but I know this this is the regathering see everything that's going on now in Israel is the judgment of God 
And, and I don't know that God made Hamas come in and get them, but you know what? You read your Old Testament, and God stirred the hearts of a lot of wicked people to come and kill his people. Often. To try to get them to turn to him. And I don't wish nothing bad on Israel. But the point I wanted to make tonight was this. We need to, as a church, make sure that we understand our job is to go buy them back. Everybody outside this building, the, down under that L where I get my hair cut now, they have it. They have, they have just tents, tents, tents there right outside the door. And I think, well, Lord, just put them there for me. I get my hair cut. I'm just going to talk to them. But it's refuse. It's, it's, it's disgusting. And they don't deserve, they deserve, they chose sin. Nobody deserves anything. But God wants us to look at that. And God told him to go buy back his wife who, who left him, who was selling herself, having other kids, doing the wrong thing. And God showed a picture of what he was going to do for Israel when they don't deserve it. Everything that's going to happen with Israel, the love of God coming and grabbing them, has nothing to do with what they're doing. It has all to do with what God is doing. Everything you have in this life today being saved. I mean, I, I think about, I, there's so many applications in the book of Hosea in that first chapter. I think about my life. I mean, God, for some reason, you know, the, God's, the, our relationship with God is always a picture of a marriage. Uh, and just like the husband and the wife, it's a picture of the church and the marriage of God to the church. She's the church, he's God. And according to the Bible, he's the Lord. And, and she's a picture of the, the bride of God. And, and, and so we look at this and God says, I want you to go marry that person that's, un, that's a whore doing the wrong thing. I want you to bring her home. And, and then she's going to leave and she's going to mess up. So as a church, Deserving. I, I'm, I thank God we get to be here. And man, our kids may never understand how they don't find it out the, the hard way. I hope that they, they, they live through the grace of God and say, you know, Pastor was this, and I don't ever want to be that. Brother Ito was this, and I don't ever want to be that. I remember when Dale preached years ago when he was a kid, he said, he said uh, I'm not like Lisa and Ito and my dad. But I still needed Christ. And, and he's preaching on the maniac of Gadara that day. And, 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 and God loved that maniac. Hey, it's a picture of the woman in John chapter number 8. Remember, she got caught in the act of adultery. You guys understand what that is? The act of adultery. And those men brought her to Jesus. And God says, let him that's without sin cast the first stone. And he loved her. And God is against adultery. God is against whore, whore, being a whoremonger, all that stuff. It speaks very, very clearly about that in the Bible. But he loved her, and he told her, listen, you go, go and sin no more. And that's what, that's what Hosea said to her when he got her, brought her home. and said, you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. But I love the part about how at the end God's going to gather them. And he's going to bring them back in when they're so undeserving. I, I, I feel bad for, the, for, for, for Israel, but I don't really know what to feel. I've been having a whole gamut of feelings for it, Brother Andrew. And I'm not Jewish. And, and my brother-in-law told me, Pastor don't, or Burton, don't wear that IDF shirt no more. I have the Israel Defense Force uh, sweatshirt. He said, because people are starting to do stupid things to people like that. Someone might think that you're, and, and I thought, man, I, 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 I don't want to be involved in any of that stuff. But I'm so glad that God loved me. And I can go over to, those, to the Jews, Brother Andrew, and think, man, they're, they're all so wicked. But you know what? God doesn't see the wickedness. God doesn't see our wickedness, especially because we're his children. And we're, we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ when we get saved. And, and God, all he sees is his son when he sees us. And he's the same way with the Jews. He loves them. They've overlooked him. They're not looking toward him. But I'm telling you, we got to be real careful when we leave here to, not real, to realize that by the grace of God, we are what we are because we didn't deserve it. Grace is something you get that you don't deserve. And by the grace of God, we ought to be showing them the exact same love that God showed us. And we ought to be out there buying them back and doing whatever we can to help the down and outer. Because I really do believe that God sees that more 
than me helping going and and and, and to a, a finding some guy that's got some money and start talking to him about the Lord. I think that God blesses me more if I go to the down and outer and just show him that I care about the down and outer, Lord. And, and God loves them. So tonight, that's what the church is. That's what we ought to think about. And and listen, I may still come back and look at some of this with you. I do want to look at some more stuff in, in the book of Daniel. And I've been thinking a lot about the Jews lately and all the stuff that's happening. And maybe preach to you some of this stuff about prophecy and different things so you can understand what's going on. But the main, the main thing is God was upset. God gave an illustration, told him to go marry that woman. She wasn't right. She left him, and God says, now go buy her back. And that's a picture of who Christ is. He's going to he buy us or he'll rebuy us because he's never going to forget us. We're always going to be his, even if we don't stay right with him. But, but, he, but we'll, go, we'll have a lot of scars, and we'll have a lot of things that are going to affect us in our life as we go through this life living in sin, and, and stuff we'll never forget. But thank God, by the grace of God, we are what we are because of him. And thank God he can change your life and do what he does. And we ought to be thinking about that tonight. Let's bow our heads for prayer. And maybe the Lord spoke to you tonight. I don't know. I know it may be a little confusing for you. I didn't even write a note down, really. Just wrote a little bit down. But I, I was looking at it and thinking, man, I'm so glad God came and got me. Just a, just a nutcase. Didn't care about anything but, but myself. So very thankful. And I want to be like that for the Lord. I want, to, I want to reach people. The sinful soul doesn't merely just forsake the Lord. They eventually forget the Lord. That's what they did. They forgot him. They forgot God. And God said it himself. And they're in so much trouble right now. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. But I do know this. Folks, this to me. There's never been a time in history where we're seeing, where people have seen prophecy literally being fulfilled like it is today all over this world with this thing going on right now with the Jews. Many old preachers saying, I cannot believe it, but it is absolutely coming true what God said was going to happen. They could, it could happen any moment. He could come back. Are you saved tonight? God could come back and take us out of here right now and people would disappear. Christians, would you disappear? Would you be with God or would you be stuck on this earth for seven years going through a hell on earth after about three and a half years? Hey, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you are saved, you need to get busy. Those little kids, man, I'm so thankful for the bus ministry. We'll run those buses on Saturday and so thankful for that because and if you're working the bus ministry, you'll realize they got no hope without us at this moment in their life. Now, mama, dads could move and stuff could happen. They could have a grandma come get them, something like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that couldn't happen, but God's using us. And thank God, God loves ugly. I'm so thankful that he does. So I would not be here if he didn't. Folks are praying. Lord, bless the invitation. Now help us in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for coming and getting us like you did. I don't know if anybody was looking for you, but you were looking for us. <clears throat> and Lord, I, my younger years I'd often try to talk myself out and believe that it can't be true. Why would you love someone like me? But thank God for this book. Thank God I can read this book and see the promises that you have all through it for, for the person that wasn't looking for you, that turns away from you. Because of your love, we are what we are. Lord, help us not to forget that. Help us to make sure we, uh, we focus in on the destitute. Lord, you have us in an area where it's pretty ugly outside, Lord. But God, it's not by mistake. It's not just because we had a building here. No, you led us all here to reach these folks in this neighborhood. And nobody's coming, God. Nobody can see what you can see except us. And I'm thankful for that, Lord. And I pray that the church would grow spiritually. We would, we, we would work till you come and we'd see great and mighty things, God. And I'm thankful, Lord, that I'm not going to have to be here for the seven-year tribulation while, while the Jews are being saved and turning to you. And some of them aren't going to turn to you. A third of the earth will be killed. And so many things are going to happen. God, we'll be, we'll be long gone. We'll be with you in heaven. And uh, I'm very thankful for that, God. Thankful for these promises. I don't deserve anything. I don't know why you came and got me. I don't know why I get to live in a great country and have a wonderful family and a church family. When there's so many Christians out there today destitute of everything that I have. But God, they're still happy because they have you. And so help us to be content in you. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So, Lord, please help us to reach all we can. We love you and we need you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're going to meet here at 1230 for the Super Church on Saturday. Yes, sir. 1230. Buses are going to leave at 1, right? And uh, we'll run the, run the Super Church on Saturday. If you cannot be here and you have an important job, please uh, let us know, okay? Uh, and that would be good. And we're going to have a great day. If you have any questions about anything, let us know. And then remember, this weekend is a big weekend. Invite somebody to church. Be a good time. See somebody get saved, okay? God bless you. I love you.